Okay, yep, there. Now, it's recording, right? Yeah. I'm going to talk about vinyls and music. I'm going to shift. Major shift. Why is there all this crap on here? Move. Yeah, I le I don't know if you know this by all the stuff that's already on my channel, but I love musica. The, mu the arts... And I'm working on stuff, right? Actually working on my own music. I have, like, ten album, ten plus albums planned out of original stuff. I don't know exactly what it's all going to sound like, but you just need the idea and then you can form the tune around that. It's kind of how I roll with it. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, like, pull some vinyls out and then just talk about why music cool. Um... Mm. What do I want to do? Let's talk about... Oh, dang it, I had a cool... Let's do Led Zeppelin 2, because that's a cool one. Sure. Let... I'm going to have to bring this up to the camera. Led Zeppelin... Do. And music back then was really cool. I don't know if you know that, but just the systems... The music, yeah, it was good. But also just the way people listened to it was awesome. People have covered this before, but I want to go in-depth on it. So, here's the thing with the vinyl record. I'm not going to pull it out, because you know what a vinyl record looks like. But, uh, nah, I will. Um, it's, it has two sides. Each side fits about, like, 20 minutes of music on it. I don't know if that's important. details important to this, but... Is this scratched up? I know my Dark Side of the Moon scratched up. Which pisses me off, because that's, like, the one that actually justified be me needing a record of it. And now I have to buy a new one. Um, looks good. No, this one's good. But, yeah. Uh, it's got one side and another. So, obviously, you'll listen through the song, like, the needle will go all the way to the middle. And then it'll be silent, and the music will stop. You'll listen to, like... In this case, it's like four songs, because this one doesn't have a lot of songs on it. And there, a lot of them are really long. But uh, then you'll flip it over. There will be a space between listening to music. Uh, an album that uses that really good is um, The Beatles' Abbey Road. Because this, the first side, the last song that plays is I Want You, She's So Heavy. Which ends with like this big dramatic evil sounding riff that just keeps that fell over, just just keeps getting louder and louder, and with this weird like grain noise that keeps filling up the air until it just cuts randomly out of nowhere. So you'll get up, you'll you'll like be comprehending. What did I just listen to? They just said the same sen two sentences over and over. And then I fell asleep for the second half. What even? Wh and then woke up near the end when it cut. L what did I just listen to? And then you'll come over, start flipping it over. By that point, you've kind of like re got your recollected yourself. You have a grasp on reality again. So you'll flip the disc over, put the thing on, and then here comes the sun will start playing. How cool is that? That's awesome. Like, just a little happy tune. But if you're listening on Spotify, you don't have that flip. It'll just play it. You don't have to flip Spotify over. You'll just... The song will end, and then here comes the sun will start playing. That's stupid. That is dumb. Uh, because people say it's jarring. Because it is. It's meant to be like... you're meant. To, there's meant to be a gap between listening to the songs. Like, maybe... If, Maybe, maybe, for some reason, you listen to the first side, and then you have to go do something else. Like, you take a break, then come back, flip the side, oh, listen to the second half of the album, and then, like, you have the this huge pause. Personally, I don't think it's that jarring anyway, because, like, the song, like, it serves as, like, just, like, a relief from my Why She's So Heavy. Like, you... Like, the song ends, like, this big, deep breath, and then you a nice, calm exhale into, um, Here Comes the Sun. 
So some people are just different, but I'm not everyone, so they all see it as jarring. Um, Led Zeppelin 2, the cool example I want to give is um, openers. Opening songs can awesome, can be awesome. They can, like, really introduce you into the space you're in. And Led Zeppelin 2 uses it masterfully because it opens the first side. Open. Here's the thing. Obviously, there's two sides, and you can listen in any order you want. You could listen to side two first for some reason if you're were quirky like that. But, um, yeah, you'd listen to side two first. That'd be weird to do with some albums, though. Like The Wall. If you listen to Pink Floyd's The Wall first... Like, I mean, like, the, any, if you listen to that out of order, that'd be so weird. But, uh, yeah. The cool thing with Led Zone 2 is it has great openers on both sides. It, side 1 starts with Whole Lot of Love, and side 2 starts with Heartbreaker. A lot of song, a lot of albums do that in different ways, kind of, play with the two different openers very differently. Like, Led Zeppelin, uh, here, let me find it. I want to show them off if I'm going to mention them. Because uh, otherwise, why do I own them if not to share the experience with others, you know? Um, Led Zeppelin 3 opens with Immigrant Song. Everyone knows Immigrant Song. If that That's probably the only song most of you even know of Led Zeppelin. Because ah, everyone's seen Thor Ragnarok. But, um, yeah, there's that, and then you probably, you've, you've heard of Stairway to Heaven. That's, I think, I'm pretty sure that's most people's knowledge of Led Zeppelin, is, like, they've heard Immigrant Song a thousand times because of Thor, and then they've heard of Stairway to Heaven being the greatest rock song ever. They probably haven't heard the song, but they've heard of it, because it's just so, like, Stairway to Heaven, How to Hell, just all these associations, they've heard of it. But yeah, that's about as deep as it goes. <laughs> Maybe they've heard of other Led Zeppelin songs. And some are actually know what songs are. Like, I know some people who know what Cashmere was. I didn't expect that they'd know what Cashmere is. But anyway. This one opens with Immigrant Song. The second side opens with one of my favorite songs ever. Gallows Pole. So instead of doing just some explosive opening, it ha starts with this cool little folky build up i guess mm. cool little adventure it starts off with an adventure like a mini stairway to heaven <laughs> that is kind of how this album works as well this is another thing that's cool is chapters like one side of a disc can be a whole theme and then the other side could be something completely different you're flipping it over anyway so the listening experience is kind of like flipping over a book page so it's like going to a new chapter of it. So this album, the first side is all like the hard rock stuff, like the fun stuff, and then the second side is all the calm, calmer folk stuff. Also, can I just say Led Zeppelin has the weirdest closing songs? Like, they do not utilize closing songs as good as they should have or could have. Like, I, I should really be a producer or like just someone who manages this kind of stuff. Like, the guy you go to, if you make a collection of songs and give them to me, I will order them in the be cool, funnest, listenable way possible. Because ending songs are a whole other art, and Led Zeppelin uh, do it weirdly a lot of the time. If I go to the back of this and see the this, that's not how the track is listing. Okay. I actually have to open this one, but I'm not going to because I already know what the listing is. I memorized it. Of course, because of course I did. How long has it been? Ten minutes? Sweet. But, um, the first side has Since I've Been Loving You, right? That is a cool, dramatic, like, finale, if I've ever heard one. And it's the second to last song on, the so on side one. What? It is immediately followed up with the actual closing of side one, Out on the Tiles, which is a great song, and it's fun. Why is it the closer instead of Since I've Been Loving You? Why? Why would you do that? That's so weird. That's something Led Zeppelin do a lot as well, is like they 
uppercut a lot of the songs that should be closers. Like, yeah, you can close off an album with an energetic song, but that's not the one... Like, Out in the Tiles is too casual to do that. It has to be, like, an epic closing song if you're going to close it off with it. You can't just, like... It can't just be an, an okay kind of just, like, waltz, fun little jog, like, thing to jog to, you know? I don't know how to describe it, but, yeah. Uh, the second side, this is the probably the most egregious, like, one of the most egregious examples of Led Zeppelin not knowing how to just close an album entirely, because side two closes with Hats Off to Ray Harper, which is the weirdest song I'm sure you've ever heard, if you've heard it, because on one side... It's like this slide, what I assume is a slide guitar sign, just Jimmy Page, like, just killing it on a slide guitar, like, doing a lot of slidey, slidey stuff, you know? And then Robert Plant's weird, distorted, vocal, like, wing, I don't know how to describe it, weird vocals on the other side. Like, you're listening with headphones, one's on one side, one's on the other, and it's flipping weird. It's a cool song, it's a good listening experience, but, like, why would you end it with that? Why would not end with... Why not, like, reorder the songs a little bit, put Tangerine on the first side, have it close with, uh... Uh, Since I've Been Loving You Like It Should've, and then have Out on the Tiles open side two, and then have the whole album just end with a uh, Gallows Pole. Because that's a, an amazing song. Why not have it end with that? As like this epic climax. Other epic climax. That's the amazing thing with albums as well. You get two epic openings and two epic climaxes. But yeah. Why wouldn't they do? Why? Just it's so weird. Dude. So weird. Anyway. I'm going to put this back. Let's find another one that... Uh, I have two here that do it weird. I'm going to... There's physical graffiti. I'm going to... No, I'll wait for that one. I'm going to do House of the Holy, because that's a cool... I put these in the wrong order. I am very meticulous with my ordering. Everything's got to be in order. Anyway. Houses of the Holy, the one with the very weird album art of, like, naked kids for some reason. Uh... <laughs> Something's the most egregious with its ordering. None of the songs are bad. In fact, they'd probably be seen as great if they weren't positioned so terribly. Because the the side one ends with the song called The Crunge, which is a funky little beat, and it's really cool. But why is it closed with that? Side one is filled, has two songs on it. There's eight songs on this album. Two of the songs on side one would have been great to close it off with. You could have used either one. Probably Over the Hills and Far Away would have been the better option. I'm actually just going to like... Does it show it on the back? No. Dang it. i got to open it up. It doesn't even show it like that. I have to like take the... There's a big card in it that shows the listing. I'll just take that out. But yeah. Um, side... One opens with Song Remains the Same. That's a great opener. Um, it, then it goes to the Rain Song. Already a weird choice. Like, yeah, that's cool. Uppercutting, kind of, not uppercutting, but like, just kind of dropping from the exciting opening straight into just this extremely calm little seven minute acoustic, like, it's just calm ball love ballad. But, um, bold move, that could have worked if the other orders didn't suck, because now it's just seen as, like, another misstep and a bunch of missteps. Cause, and then it's over the hills and far away, and then the crunch. First off, the crunch should be on side two, because side two is the more funkier side anyway. But also, here's how the order should have gone. Song remains the same. Actually, no, I'll do the order after I read side two, because I need to establish these. Dancing days is the opener for side two. Dancing Days is already a kind of lame song. Like, it's fun to listen to, but also... Why would you open a side with it? Like, it's not... It's an okay song. 
Like, why would you open it with that? Then it goes to Dire Mate. Dear, how do you pronounce that? Huh, can I put that up to the camera so you can read it? Um, there it is. If it would like focus, you could probably see that. All right. Yeah. How the flip do you pronounce that? I'm just, I'm just gonna do it different every time. Dear Merker, uh, which is like a re just reggae. It's just a, a Bob Marley song, basically. <laughs> Bob Marley, but it's Led Zeppelin. That's basically what it is. Um, so it does that. Then No Quarter, which is an seven-minute epic. I was going to say eight minutes, but it's not. Seven-minute little epic about, like, just bubble... How do I describe it? No Quarter is weird. Like, it's very... The best way I can describe it is, like, dark and bubbly. <laughs> At least with those, like, opening synths. Blue, 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 blue. But, yeah. It's, a, like, the lyrics is create this scene of, like, Vikings going through the mountains and dying of frostbite and getting eaten by wolves or something like that. But, um, yeah, it's very cool and dramatic. Uh, then it's followed by... The Ocean, I was going to say House of the Holy, but the album's called that, and the song with the same name isn't on this album, because Dancing Days sounded too much like it, I guess. was basic, like They're very similar songs, and they didn't want to do the same song on it. But it closes with The Ocean. Why would you close it with The Ocean? It's just a... It's the same as Out in the Tiles. Like, it's just an okay rock song. I, And also... I'm just going to say... The ocean has this part in it, like, it just goes, la, 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 like, it has this energetic, kind of energetic rock saunter going on, and then all the instruments cut out, and it's just the lyrics doing that, like, this album's equivalent of Black Dog, basically, la, 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 as opposed to, like, the, ah, 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 uh, 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 but, um, yeah, the, like, they should have used that more, because it only happens once in the entire song, which is dumb, that should have been, like, how cool would it have been if the, that was the chorus? If I do a cover of this song, that's the first thing I'm changing, shortening some of it, uh, or just making some of the lyrics, you know, I'm just gonna make it, like, so that appears more often, because it absolutely should in the song, because it's amazing. Um, but yeah, now that I've explained all that, here's how I would reorder it. Because ordering, like, if a great song is followed up by a, a whatever song, it's going to make the whatever song seem even worse and kind of put the whole, the whole album down as a whole. But if it's all ordered right, like, and transitions well from one song to the next, then it's all going to lift each other up instead so song remains the same that stays um and then i would move the song no quarter no how would i move this i had a plan now it's gone uh flip what was i gonna do Oh yeah, no quarter would have been is like supposed to be like could have been a dramatic closer as well. So that'll kind of show you where I'm going with this. But um, song remains the same. Gosh dang it! I swear I was gonna go somewhere with that. <laughs> um, can't do that. I don't want to do that. Uh, the only way this works is if I move the crunch over to the other side. But the problem is I need to move one of these songs over. So, I had a whole plan for this. I, like, had it all planned out and everything, and now I don't know what to do with these. Flip, man. What am I... Sp Basically, this side would end with Over the Hills and Far Away. Like, another song would go where... Uh, I want this side to open with the ocean. Here, you know what? Move Dancing Days. 
because that's the only way I see this working. Move Dancing Days over to side one. So song remains the same, then Dancing Days, because it's like whatever song goes from energetic, like it slowly declines kind of in energy. So song remains the same, Dancing Days, then the Rain Song. Uh, and then that goes over to Over the Hills and Far Away, which is a great climax. And then side two would open with the ocean, because that's a great opener. It would be a good opener, at least. Then, uh, yeah, the ocean. Then Dire Maker, Dur Durker, Durker, uh, then the crunch, kind of like transition slowly into the weirder stuff, so you're not just getting dropped with it. And then No Quarter would be the epic finale of the whole album as a whole. And that would have fixed the whole thing. It probably would be seen as the greatest Led Zeppelin album. Eh, probably not. But, like, it would have definitely been seen better than it is now. If it had been like that. But alas, I didn't exist back in the 70s, so... Here we are! Okay. Next, I'm going to do a little short bit on Led Zeppelin 4. The famous one. This is the album everyone knows about. This is the one with Stare to Heaven on it. Uh, the case is the the like protective sheen is on it, so it's all shiny. But um, basically the track listing for this one goes: uh, Black Dog, great opener, Rock and Roll, uh, Battle of Evermore, Stairway to Heaven. That closes side one because of course side two opens with I actually kind of forgot the order. The exact order of side two. Does it say on it? No. I'm just going to pull the disc out and see. Because I know. So it opens with um, Misty Mountain Hop side two. Then it's four sticks. Okay, I was about to say it was the other way around. So then it's four sticks. Then going to California. And then the whole album has this big dramatic ending with When the Levee Breaks. Um, I would have reordered it just a little bit. The endings are great. Leave those the way they are. But, um, move, I would, hmm, first off, side two has to open with rock and roll, because that's a great opener. Misty Mountain Hop is one of those whatever song, like, it kind of works as an opener, it works better than, like, the ones before, all the kind of sauntery rock songs before, the calmer rockers, but Misty Mountain Hop like, it just shouldn't be an opener. Like, there's better openers on this. Like, Rock and Roll. That should have been the opener for Side 2. Because Side 2 is kind of seen as the weaker side. Because four, four Sticks is on it. So, here's how it should have gone. Black Dog. Then, not Four Sticks. I don't want... You don't want to follow that like that. Misty Mountain Hop. Yeah, Black Dog, then Misty Mountain Hop, then uh, Battle of Evermore. Just kind of have all of the <laughs> all the Lord of the Rings songs all in a row, kind of. Uh, and then Stare to Heaven. Then Side 2 opens with Rock and Roll, then Four Sticks, then Going to California, then When the Levee Breaks. Just that simple change would have like fixed the whole would have just would make the whole album seem even just that little bit better just a little bit better uh <laughs> yeah anyway the next one i'm going to talk about physical graffiti the definite best led zeppelin album it's got more it's kind of unfair to compete this with led zeppelin 4 because led zeppelin 4 cuz it has more stuff in it <laughs> it it's def it's like the immediate competitor and it's better, literally just, it'd still be better even if it was didn't have more songs, because the first disc, it's a double album, so it has two discs. The first disc alone would have been the best Led Zeppelin album. Like, six songs, the six best Led Zeppelins on, well, you just alone, those six songs would have, like, carried it far beyond all of them anyway. Anyway, side one... The first disc, side one, opens with Custard Pie, which is hilarious. Then it goes The Rover. The first, each side of this album kind of has a chapter, like, 
consistency in each side. The first, well, how long has it been? 24 minutes? Whatever. Uh, like jamming kind of feel to it, because the rover... And then that's immediately followed by In My Time of Dying, their cover of In My Time of Dying, which is fantastic. And it's 11 minutes, so obviously they can only fit three songs on this side and the next side, because Kashmir is eight minutes. But yeah, side two opens with How's the Holy? Yeah. And then it goes to Trampled Underfoot, which is like one of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs. <laughs> that and Kashmir are some of my other favorites of theirs. Um, and then it closes with Kashmir, which is eight minutes. That's how I want my one of my albums to be laid out. Like, it's going to have, like, it'll be a double album, two five-minute, or, like, just two five-minute songs, then some ten-minute epic, making up 20 minutes. Just rinse, repeat that for <laughs> four sides, and that'd be awesome. I want my own physical graffiti. <laughs> um, another... Um, my brain died. Where was I going with that? Anyway, like those songs are seen as like some of their best. So if they had just released that disc alone, it would have been amazing. And then they could have used some of the all the stuff in disc two in Coda. <laughs> if they just waited it out, and then Coda would have been seen as one of the best Led Zeppelin albums. <laughs> Which is ironic, because like, the deluxe version of Coda has a bunch of stuff from, like, demos of early versions of stuff from Physical Graffiti. Like, um, uh, with the Wanton song, and In the Light. But yeah, I just think that's kind of funny. <laughs> Like, had they just waited it out, they could, like, they could have had a perfect, absolutely perfect run. <laughs> if they had just, like, made Physical Graffiti one thing. And then, because Coda has, like, a similar art cover, like, the art cover would have worked great for the stuff on the second disc. But anyway, Side 2 opens up with, uh, What's the first thing? In the Light. So if you listen to all these in order, you get hit with two eight-minute epics in a row. <laughs> you go from Cashmere straight into In the Light. I love In the Light. It's so awesome. I'm, And then I realized the song I made, uh, one of the songs I made, is basically just an acoustic version of In the Light. I'm not going to change anything about it, but I realized right after making it, like, oh shoot, I just copied that. It even, like, some of the lyrics kind of sound like stuff from When the Levy Breaks. So, whoopsies. Um, anyway. Yeah, it opens within the light. Side 3. Oh, right. Side 2. Earlier, the one with Kashmir is kind of like the hit side. Like, it has all the stuff that's used in, like, greatest hit stuff. Side 3 is, like, the calm side. The happy side. Because it, in the light's immediately followed by this short, cute little instrumental called Braun Year Or? I don't know how to pronounce it. It's another one of the weird to pronounce songs like Dear Mecker, but um, Bra I'm going to call it Braun Eeyore. It doesn't help that there's a song on Led Zeppelin 3 called Braun Eeyore Stomp. Like, it's spelled the exact same, but without the stomp, and there's an R next to the Y. So Braun Eeyore Stomp, and then Braun Eeyore. I'll just pronounce it like that, Braun Eeyore. But um, it's just this cute, like, two-minute little instrumental and that made me fall in love with instrumental stuff. Black Sabbath does that a lot. Cute little instrumentals. And I love it. It's always su such a good time. Um, then it's followed by, like, the happiest Led Zeppelin song ever. Down by the Seaside. I love Down by the Seaside. It's so just cute. It's so happy. It's so, like, apocalyptic as well. Because it's like, like, see all these people as they don't know like that they should be helping mother nature and they're worried about themselves but also like i guess what makes it happy is it's like kind of an answer like you it gives an answer it's not just like we're all gonna die like radiohead is it's like uh uh the people are too worried but they need to if they were just like farmers they would be happy <laughs> that's kind of how it, the message of it goes <laughs> But it's, I just love Down by the Seaside. It's so nice. It's like they're imp the improvement of Deer Maker. It's like the evolution of that. Like, they just did that better. Um, and then the, the side three ends with um, Ten Years Gone, 
which is so cool. It kind of has some beach elements, like during the instrumental, the big instrumental break, it has like this kind of beach feeling to it. But the whole song, like, is just like mostly mellow and super. I don't know. I'd, I I think I'd ever describe a song as wisdom. <laughs> like it just like the whole song like you ju that's just the word I'm picturing right now. Like the word you picture the whole time you're listening to it. Just that guitar, that dun 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 riff just screams the word wisdom for some reason to me. Um, <laughs> this is gonna sound super pretentious the whole time. I don't care. Uh, side four, the fun one. This would be like the fun one, the fun side, the weird, the weird, the fun side, the outtake side, if you will. But um, it opens with, oh yeah, this is where the ordering on this side kind of gets all wonky. But um, it starts with Night Flight, which is a happy song and it's a cool song. But it's like this side kind of has two openers in a row, like, it has this, then it has the Wanton song, with that just extremely heavy, intimidating guitar riff, just extremely punch-in-the-face heavy, and it is extreme, it is, like, such, this whole song is basically just a punch in the face, like, this song could be played during a bar fight, you know, and it probably would be, like, assuming the bar fight was, like, had something to do with some kind of girl. Why am I touching the bed randomly? I do that a lot. Like, I'll just touch things. Like, my hand is, like, this look feels cold. I'll touch that, and then my hand will be cold. Why do I do that? It's so weird. But, um, <laughs> then that's followed by probably the most, I'm, I'm amazed this isn't talked about more. The jarring, the kind of jarring transition from, <laughs> oh! Say things right, Max. Jarring transition from the Wanton song to Boogie with Stew. Boogie with Stew. Such a cute... That's like the other Down by the Seaside on this. Like, it has a fun little... Just a cute, fun atmosphere to it. Um, and it's just super enjoyable. And then that's immediately followed by uh, Black Country Woman. Hey, hey, mama. What is wrong with you? Yeah, and then the album ends. This is this is the most egregious example of ending songs for an album, closing songs. It ends with "Sick Again," which is one of those like waltzy kind of just hard rock songs. It's a very unique song in the catalog, like, but it's one of those just moderate fun rock songs. Like, it would be in the middle of an album. It wouldn't open anything. It wouldn't close anything. It would just be in there. And yet they closed the whole thing with it? Why? Why would you do that? Anyway, so I'm going to reorder the whole second. The first disc is all perfect. Like, the stuff with In My Time of Dying and Cashmere, that's all perfect. But, um... W uh, the second disc can have some reordering. So first off, we're going to move, uh, we're gonna swap the songs, uh, what was it, Night Flight and Ten Years Gone to the opposite sides that they're on. Basically, side w three will open with Night Flight, and then it'll go to, it'll be like Night Flight, uh, Down by the Seaside, Brawn Your Oar, then It'll cl the side three will close with, uh, in the light, like continuing the loop like songs and then epic closer. Is there enough time on it to do that? I assume so. Ten years gone is six minutes. Night fly isn't near that long, so I have to look. I'm sure it fits. I'm sure like because timing is something. Every each an album can only fit like twenty three minutes on it. Twenty three minutes, so you got to be careful with reordering. But um. The side four would open with uh, the Wanton song. <laughs> then it would be followed by Sick again. Then Boogie with Stew, then Black Country Woman. And then the whole album with would end with Ten Years Gone. So, yeah. That would have been a much better ordering. 
also sick again would be a good transition from the wonton song kind of like just calm transition into boogie with stew but um yeah that's my piece on physical graffiti it would have been like most albums could be 10 out of 10s if you just re or if you just ordered them correctly <laughs> um coda let's look at coda coda again would have been made perfect by just like it could have been so cool if they just like made physical graffiti one album and then waited on all the other stuff all their albums after that could have been great because they could have just done like three albums of physical graffiti oh it just would have been interesting um do i even have any quarrels with this album it's kind of like yes actually maybe I don't, I didn't, I've never given this one too much thought, to be honest. I just kind of like thought it, just saw it just now and was like, I'll talk about this one, sure. Um, we're gonna groove. That's a good opener. Poor Tom. Can I just say Poor Tom is an amazing song? I love Poor Tom. <laughs> Poor Tom, the seventh son, always knew what's going wrong. Anything that you can have from Tom. But yeah, that's just such a cool song. Uh, that and wearing. A wearing and tearing. Wearing and tearing isn't as good, but it's still pretty cool. Like, cause it's just like it's a great closer, cause it's basically a punk rock. It's a punk rock song, basically them just showing off that had they kept going, they still would have crushed the competition with their music. It still would have been awesome. Um, and that probably wouldn't even have been what it would have sounded like. Like it, that was just showing they could do good punk rock. And that's an outtake. They probably would have done much better punk rock had they kept going. This was just what they had. Which is cool. Before the drummer died. But, um... Yeah, We're Gonna Groove is good. I Can't Quit You Baby probably should have been the opener for side two. I don't really know how I'd reorder this. It's kind of like... Bonzo's Mantra... Something about Bonzo's Mantra and Wearing and Tearing being directly in a row is kind of weird. Because Bonzo's Mantra... I would have had Bonzo's Mantra be like the third song on side, side one. Like, it should be a third song, but like, not that kind of third song. <laughs> Bonzo's Mantra followed by Walter's Walk would have actually been a pretty good thing. Because I think Walter's Walk is about... Like, the lyrics are about losing the drummer, from what I know. But yeah. Also, I don't have Into the Outdoor or Presence yet. Those two albums. Which I really do, because In Through the Outdoor is like one of my favorite albums uh, ever. So, yeah. Also, Presence Has Achilles Last Stand and Candy Store Rock, which are awesome. And I don't have it. Gosh dang it. Why won't you give it to me, Walmart? You had everything else perfectly. I haven't been showing the album cover for this one. Did I even show it for Physical Graffiti? This one's not that much like to go off of. It's just letters and a solid colors, but yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm getting tired now. Should I keep going? Should I? Mm, yeah, let's go to Queen. Let's go to Queen. I've got three of their albums. I have The Greatest Hits. That was one of the first nine out. Al- when I first started my collection, I got nine albums. And Queen's Greatest Hits was one of them, but now I regret it, because now I can't get, like, the albums that... The individual albums, basically. Like, now I can't get the game, because all the... I already have all the the best songs off of that. But I still want to get the album for, like, itself, because of, like, the, the lesser songs that I like on it. Like, I like Sail Away, Sweet Sister. Dragon Attack is awesome, but those obviously aren't on the greatest hits. I did the same thing with Black Sabbath. Like, I got the greatest hits thing. We sold our souls for rock and roll. And now I want to buy their first four albums. So that was annoying. (laughs) It would have been better off anyway, because the first... Because the songs used in Sabotage, which isn't in the first four, but, like, there's a better song on that called... My brain is fried. I've been talking too long. Uh, it's called Symptom of the Universe. Halfway through, it does like goes like into this 
It's like very hard rock at the start. And then the second half, it's this cute little acoustic little saunter. And the lyrics in it are, in that half of the song, are like sung very much, in a much better tune. Anyway, I'm going to talk about Queen's The Works, because that's their best album, in my opinion. Uh, it's got the coolest track listing. Finally, this one has the actual track listing on the back, but um, look at that album cover. It's just a sick album cover. <laughs> like, it's basic, but it's cool. Um, I didn't even realize there's machine cogs on the backside. That's funny. But yeah, this opens up with Radio Gaga. Awesome. This one does the two openers kind of thing. It opens with the be- with what some consider to be the best song on this. I think all the songs are great. But um, yeah, Radio Gaga. And then it immediately punches you up with Tear It Up. Like, yeah, alright, you had that cool emotional experience. Now let's party. I don't know. And then It's a Hard Life is just a weird song about marriage. I mean, it's cool. It's also... Oh, yeah. No, the game is on Greatest Hits. Never mind. In th- Play the Game, the song. In the album, the game, the opener, Play the Game, has a chorus. The chorus for it is basically just reused in It's a Hard Life. Like, they're the same chorus. <laughs> just more, like, dramatic in It's a Hard Life. Cause, which I think is kind of cool. It's like... It's like a sequel kind of deal. Like, the first song was about just dating normally, and then this song's about marriage. So it's kind of cool. Um, and then this side, this is another atrocious ordering. This song, this side, uh, this album has a song called Man on the Prowl, which is basically like their sequel to um, Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Like, another elvis kind of very, like, old rock kind of sounding song. Is there just a com- hum? My computer is like humming. It is not like, it is very old and probably dusty. I probably need to blow it off. But yeah, the side one ends with that song. That's not an ending song. <laughs> and then side one opens with like one of my new favorite Queen songs, Machines or Back to Humans. Because it has like the best, I, first I thought it was just a dumb copy of like, uh, Radio Gaga, and then I quickly re-listening, re-listening to it, realized it had some of the best vocal melodies in the entire album, or just in the entirety of Queen's career. <laughs> living in a new world, thinking in the past, living in a new world, how you gonna last? Machine world. Machine world. It like quiets down for that part in the middle and end of the song, and it is so nice. That's like this song's equivalent of like the la 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 la. But yeah. Um. Then it's I want to break free, which the album version of the song is much more disappointing than the normal than the version that you can find on YouTube, the version that, like, opens with the big dramatic, like, synth opening or whatever that, like, rises up, you know? Also, it starts... That version starts with the guitar solo, whereas this, it just kind of, like, kicks off, and then three seconds later, the lyrics start. That's lame. Uh, why would they do that? I guess they... They they definitely had time to include that. Let me see this. <laughs> it's not like it's that long. It's probably, like, a minute of build-up. Because that makes, like, the one, the song on it, maybe that's, like, the single version of the song. Let me, uh, it is, like, stuck in there. Oh. Maybe they didn't have time to do that. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of crammed. Okay. But there's a song, this is my biggest strife with this album, is there's a song, a B-side, called, uh, I Go Crazy. And it is, like, one of the best Queen songs, because it's just so, like, it goes so hard, and it's not even on this album. Why? It's the B-side to Radio Gaga, if you buy that as a single. Why isn't it on this? Get rid of... I didn't read the rest of the songs on side two. Uh, side two goes, after I Want to Break Free, it's Just Keep Passing the Open Windows. Then it, which is just, like, Mario Kart music. <laughs> Side two. Stop repeating stuff, Max. You're fun. You're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> um, then 
a hammer to fall, and then the album ends with Is This the World We Created. Bold move. Wouldn't have done it. Including the song on its own is all you need to do. Ending the album is pre- on it is pretentious as all heck, okay? Because, like... It's just so pretentious. Like, if you listen to the song, it's a sweet song, but to end the album, like, it's like you kill all the fun you just had the other 40 minutes, the previous 40 minutes listening to the album. You killed all that fun with this song, which I guess was the point, but also, how cool would it have been if you got rid of, like, Man on the Prowl, ended side one with, like, you get rid of Man on the Prowl, end side one with I Want to Break Free or something like that? No, end it with Hammer to Fall. And then on this album, on or I mean on side two, have the I Go Crazy be the closing song. You'd have space because I Want to Break Free would be moved over. Um, probably, I hope. Uh, yeah, there'd probably be enough space for that. But, um, yeah, you would... Mm, where am I going? That'd be like a really fun uppercut. Because that's basically how I listen to it on YouTube. The first time I listened to this album was on YouTube. I listen to all my music on YouTube first. Then I buy the albums that I like the most to listen to physically. And then, like, it would have been hilarious to have that as, like, this sweet little ballad, you know? Like, is this the way we create it? And then it ends... <laughs> Just go absolutely ham. That would have been the funnest. That would have made this the best Queen album. I mean, it already is, but it would have made it 10 out of 10. It would have been awesome if they just uppercut it. Just super uppercut. Uppercutting songs is fine. Like, they, the way they do it in... Uh, Led Zeppelin does it isn't the best, but that would have been... I guess Queen didn't do it. I made this up. But that would have been... The coolest way to do it. The best time in music history to have it, like, uppercutted a sweet song with a hard rock song. Anyway, what's the next one? Queen's Hot Space. People don't, some people don't like this album. Uh, cause it's like dance music. Back then they didn't like dance music. Uh, personally, uh, I don't care. Cause the songs on this are still dope. Um, side one starts with staying power, then dancer, back chat, body language, which is the one that everyone points to when they hate this album. Action this day is the closer for side one. Then side two opens with, side two is the one that doesn't have dance music in it. Like, all the songs are either just like sweet ballads or just like hard rock songs, because it starts with put out the fire, and then life is real. Both of those songs are like they're the some of the band members' homages to John Lennon because he had died. I don't know if it was like recently. I don't know when this album exactly came out, but uh, John Lennon. Died. This had to have been like the eighties, right? And John Lennon. Hold up, when did John Lennon die again? Wasn't it like in the seventies? Like. Like, the st- literally 1970, somewhere around there. And this album definitely came out somewhere in the 80s. They sure took their sweet time to make ballads for John Lennon, if that's the case. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I got some dates wrong on that. But, um... Uh, yeah, Put Out the Fire, Life is Real. Calling All Girls, Las, Para- La- Las Palabras de Amor, or... The Words of Love, then Cool Cat, and then Under Pressure, which everyone likes Under Pressure. That's, like, the thing with this album is, like, everyone hates the dance music, but Under Pressure is good. Like, that's why you'd buy this album. Personally, I like all the songs, even Body Language. Here's the thing I've realized with music, is there's two kind of pe- kinds of people who enjoy music. There's no there's people who have a sense of humor, and then no nonsense, no fun people, like my aunt. Uh, <laughs> basically... If a song has any funniness in it, what's it, humor, bad song, and they'll kill you if you, they'll, like, they'll strangle you to death if you turn that song on for them. But I'm one of the people who likes funny music, like Bo Burnham. So having, all even if the songs are bad on this, like body language is supposed to be all sexy, but it's not, but that's what makes it funny. 
So I like the song even more because of that. <laughs> you get where I'm going with this? But if you ever put it on in any situation with another human being, they would strangle you to death until you turned it off. Until you skipped over to under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think that's how a lot of this album is actually. Like, maybe some of the funner stuff. Whatever, I'm just going to talk about what I like about this album. Staying Power is fun. It's got some fun punchiness to it. How long has it been? 50 minutes, okay. Uh, yeah, Staying Power is really fun to listen to. It's just great introduction to the dance side. Dancer has also got, like, a great chorus. Like, simple but awesome. Back chat is okay. Not my favorite, but I still enjoy it a lot. Body language, I already covered that. But Action This Day, can I just say Action This Day is such a cool song. A lot of these songs have like cool solos from different things. Action uh, This Day has like a saxophone solo, I think. I might be wrong. I might be confusing it for something else. Staying Power has like this horns orchestra kind of thing going on, I think. I never listen to them again, but I'm not going to play them because... I don't want to. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of work and very time consuming, and I'd probably get like in trouble with uh, YouTube if I did that. But yeah, action this day is just so cool. The way it like the verses are whispered, like this town only is a den. Uh, if I could sing it right, this town only is a dead town, and then Freddy comes in, living in this town only is a left town, and then it just kind of cycles that a bit, and then the chorus is just, also I love the like, like some people might see it as pandering, I think it's genuine, kind of gen, like, I think it's actually genuine, like you can kind of tell when music is genuine or not. But, like, the message, like, there's, like, three songs in this album that have the message of, like, loving people. Like, three or four songs. I think just three of them have, like, a consistent theme of, like, the, the theme Under Pressure has, where it's, like, everyone should love each other. Starts with action this day. And then it comes back in Calling All Girls, which has a great chorus, a really nice chorus. And then ends with Under Pressure. I like it. Um, Put Out the Fire is a song making fun of Americans, but it's, it goes really hard, and it's awesome, uh, about, it's like, about gun violence, because John Lennon was killed by a, a, a lunatic with a gun. <laughs> I'm just reading crap on this. Produced by Queen and David Bowie. There's the David Bowie credit, okay. Um, yeah, because he's in Under Pressure. Life is Real is this really sweet ballad, which apparently, I might be wrong, uh, someone told me that uh, Bruno Mars did a cover of that song. I'll have to check it out, but that's cool. Uh, this album getting the love it deserves <laughs> from someone who clearly has some great taste. I should listen to more Bruno Mars. I'm sure he has some fanta. I've heard, like, two of his songs, and one of them isn't even his. Funk You Up, Uptown Funk isn't even his song. It's someone else's song, and he's just in it. I forgot who the dude action man was, but yeah. Um, he has Marry You, which is great. Um, I heard that while listening. My MP3 player, which I have all my music on, um, if I can put that in the right light, uh, has like FM radio options on it. So I was just listening to that, found a bunch of stuff on, like a bunch of like common, well-known songs that most people know except for me, apparently, because I live under some kind of weird hexagonal rock with very with weirdly shaped holes that only certain things can enter through um but yeah calling all girls is like it's sweet and then it has this really just cool i don't know how to describe it the chorus i just love the chorus it's so good the the lyric the verses are kind of cheesy like, like when it's like calling all girls and then the like, background, Freddie Mercury is just like, girls, boys, you know, <laughs> just out of nowhere, like, uh, okay, that's weird. Um, Las Perlabas de Amor is kind of a drag, it goes on for a bit long, but it's sweet, doesn't kill anything. Uh, cool Cat is a fun one, because it's kind of like the one that, where he, they're just showing off, 
This is like their... I just read this. Cool Cat is just their version of Deer Maker. That's funny. <laughs> Queen's Deer Maker. Um, but Freddy's like showing off his range. Like he's singing in falsetto, which is just the higher pitch of his voice the entire song. I can... I don't know if I can do a falsetto. Like, I'm never in situations where I'm trying to like... I don't know. Like maybe on and off, like I could do it, but there's a chance it'll break halfway through, probably. Under pressure, I do. I cannot hit that high point on under pressure. <laughs> yeah, I definitely can't. Anyway, gonna put this back. What's funny with uh, Hot Space is the works came right after it, meaning they like wanted to, like. Right after that came, right after Hot Space came, I Want to Break Free, which is a perfect song for Hot Space. Like, it definitely would fit on that, so they definitely were trying to keep that dance music kind of thing going on, but they knew people didn't like uh, them going too f a little too far into it, which they didn't even. They went in it for, like, half the disc, and then the other half is all sweet and hard rock stuff. <laughs> but yeah, some people don't like it. I do. That's my hot take. That's my hot take on hot space. Um, what else do I have that I want to talk about? Where the heck is Dark Side of the Moon? <laughs> I've lost one of my albums. Oh, it's right here. Okay. <sighs> that upsets me. That really upsets me that that scratched. That disc is scratched. That... I don't even know how. It's the only one that it, at least I hope it's the only one that is. I haven't gone through and checked all of them, which I probably should have been this whole time. But, uh, like, what the heck? Why is Pink Floss? Or now I have to buy Pink Floydian. That's the one album I wouldn't want to buy again, because some albums come with these two posters. Those came with the album. So if I bought another one, I'd have two more useless posters. Maybe they differentiate. I highly doubt they do different posters. But, screw me, man. Like, gosh dang it. That sucks. Um, what's another album that I want to bother covering? Black Sabbath. Let's talk about Black... Mm, do I care? Enough? No. I think I'm done. I'll do another video talking about vinyls. Do the rest another time. Why won't the lid fit anymore? Oh, it goes this way, that's why. <laughs> uh, go this way so you can fit now. There. Uh, well, I guess I'll sign off. You heard my, me rant for almost an hour. Okay. See ya.